1526. What is 1526? Why should this day be acknowledged and remembered by Dominicans and descendants of Hispaniola? Who were the slaves taken to the settlement of 1526? And why is it important to correct the narrative of this history? What is 1526? Some scholars credit as being an important date in American history in terms of North America and the first 13 colonies before 1619 and before the other failed settlements by the English in North America. There was 1526 in Florida. So this date is used and remembered as being a foundational date for the first quote unquote blacks in America, in North America, Florida particularly. 1526 and it's also a date used by some organizations as being the official start of the foundational black american experience in north america uh, but this date should also be remembered and acknowledged by dominicans and descendants of hispaniola why is that well the expedition took off from the north coast of hispaniola alion who was the lead of that expedition was a spanish noble from santo domingo he was a Santiago Knight. Those who went with him were mainly natives from Santo Domingo, Dominican priest. A good number of folks came were Atlantic Creoles, and some of the quote unquote slaves were those who were taken from surrounding islands. So this date is not only a date that, that's important to foundational black Americans, but also to those who are descendants of Spanish and Portuguese from the island of Hispaniola, those that we would call Dominicans today. But let's go into a source. Let's go into this book, Black Indians by William Lauren Katz. Page 22, it says, In June 1526, Lucas Vasquez de Alion, a wealthy Spanish official in the city of Santo Domingo on Hispaniola, founded a colony at or near the mouth of the P.D. River in eastern South Carolina six decades before Roanoke Island, eight decades before Jamestown, and almost a century before the Mayflower landed at Plymouth Rock. Alion began his North American dream. Alion's effort has been overlooked, perhaps because most people prefer to believe that the U.S. life began with the arrival of English-speaking Anglo-Saxons living under British law, perhaps death by mismanagement, disease, and slave revolt. Perhaps it's unmentioned because of its unique rebirth in the woods of people not considered value part U.S. heritage. Alion began preparing for his great adventure in 1520 by sending Captain Francisco Cordillo to locate a good land site and building friendly relations with the local inhabitants. Instead, the captain teamed up with a slave hunter, Pedro de Cuesos, while failing to survey a site, the first European act on what is now U.S. soil making slaves of free men and women. The two adventurers returned to Alion with stories of naming a great river in honor of St. John the Baptist and having cut Christian crosses and trees. Alion was not impressed with their seizure of 70 Native Americans and brought the issue to the attention of the commission preceded by Diego Columbus. The Indians were declared free and ordered returned. But Spanish records do not show whether the order was carried out, but they do show that Alion, to make amends with the natives who lost their loved ones, sent the slaver Quesos who started the problem. Once again, Quesos returned with the other captive natives he claimed had volunteered to serve as guide for the Spanish expedition. Meanwhile, Alion returned one of the original 70 Ferdinand Chicorian as his New World interpreter. Impressed with his skills and understanding of the mainland, he brought Chicorana to Spain to meet the king. After this meeting, the king issued an order permitting Alion to set sail for the coast of North America. The king's orders forbade the enslavement of the Indians and added, you be very careful about the treatment of the Indians. Three Dominican missionaries were sent along to protect Native Americans from the Europeans. 
With this record as a backdrop, Alion prepared to launch his expedition to North America. After some delays of his fleet of six vessels sailed from Puerto Plata, six or seven dozen horses, physicians, sailors, and the Dominican priest. Uh, once again, pages 22 to 23, Black Indians, a hidden heritage, William Lauren Katz. So as we can see on that source, the expedition took off from the north coast of Hispaniola. And these were mainly Spanish nobles, 500 to be exact. And they number the quote unquote slaves or African slaves as being a hundred. But as stated, these slaves were returnees, folks coming back to Florida as ordered by some of the Spanish nobles. Quote unquote, African slaves were folks who were merely returning from earlier expeditions. So that has to be understood in terms of who were these people who arrived in that region in this particular time period. And the other half, we already know, came from the surrounding islands, the Lucayans. We covered that in previous episodes. So was it a failed expedition? A lot of folks like to describe this expedition as failed because somehow the Spanish did not permanently settle there. But in essence, was it failed? I mean, if we look at old maps from that time period, Alion's name is on the map, titled as the land of Alion. So if on the map it's calling it the land of Alion, then obviously there's a, an acknowledgement of the people in that time period who are contributing Alion as the founder of this land. So it was not failed to them, and it should not be quote unquote failed expedition to us now let's go into now the vast majority 500 in Alion's expedition and like another 600 from the Soto's expedition were mainly Spanish people Spanish Portuguese nobles caballeros horsemen cattle ranchers so these are the people who you will credit as the founders Spanish ancestry, Portuguese ancestry, Spanish blood, Spanish surnames. Uh, these people did not disappear. They're still here. They're still in Latin America. They're still throughout the Caribbean. The descendants are still here today. But for right now, for the main part, in terms of the American experience, somehow these folks are now titled immigrants and not part of those who were the true founders and the first settlers who were majority Spanish and from Santo Domingo, from the North Coast. Uh, Spanish Portuguese descent and we know according to the records both the Soto and Alion were Santiago Knights so this has to be acknowledged as well so the Santiago Knights contributions has continued to be minimized and almost erased by that black legend as stated before in previous episodes the black legend propaganda against the Spanish crown and Spanish contributions to the Americas still is alive today something that started back in the 1500s by English speaking folks. So in terms of those Atlantic Creoles of Latin descent, when we say Latin, we are including the Spanish, Portuguese, some of the French and early Italians all under the Latin umbrella in terms of Latin America. When we talk about 1526 and folks coming in and bringing in people who are gonna create a foundation and build a solid settlement, you wanna bring your, your best, your brightest. So who would have been the best in 1526? Who would have been the most educated, the most skilled, the most knowledgeable of both the old and the new world, if not the inhabitants of Hispaniola during that time period? Hispaniola was already building churches, schools, legal systems on the island by that time. Already a surplus of cattle and livestock. So these were the skilled folks who would have been ideal to start your new colonies in that time period. 1526, I stated earlier, is just another example of how not only the contribution of Spanish folks and people of Portuguese descent, but also the contribution of those on the island of Hispaniola. And that has to be honored and remembered. I hope you appreciate this information. This is your brother David Rodriguez with another episode of Hispaniola History Channel. Good night. Peace.